When we see an expression like this, we know immediately that it is mathematically invalid. 2 does not equal to 24. However, if appropriate units are included, this expression makes perfect sense, since we know that 2 dozen x do equal to 24x, or 2 dozen people equal to 24 people. This is a simple example of unit conversion, which is a process that the same quantity is expressed in a different way using a different unit for the same dimension. Although nowadays there are many websites and cell phone applications that can help us conveniently convert between units, unit conversion is still a fundamental skill an engineer should possess. In this video, I will summarize the procedure of basic unit conversion. For most cases of unit conversion, the procedure can be clearly summarized into four steps. First step, be clear on what is your old unit or the unit that's given, and what is the new unit, the unit you desire to express the quantity in. Step two, find the equality between the old and the new units. In other words, how are these two units related to each other? Step 3. Based on the equality, write the appropriate conversion factor that I will explain more in the examples that follow. Step 4. Set up an equation, multiply the old, the given quantity with the conversion factor, and cancel out the old unit, and therefore achieve the quantity in the new, the desired unit. However, as I will show later in an example, Sometimes the unit conversion procedure can be more complicated and multiple conversion factors and multiple calculation procedures are needed. Let's look at this example. We need to convert 6 inches, which is a quantity of length, to its equivalent quantity in centimeters. Although it is a quite simple example, we are still going to follow the four-step procedure that I described previously. First step, determine what are the old and the new units. This is simple. The old unit is inch and the new unit is a centimeter. Next step, we need to write the equality of inch and centimeter. The equalities used in unit conversion can be found either in your textbooks or online or even in your cell phone applications nowadays. So we can find that the relation is 1 inch equals to exactly 2.54 centimeter. Then the third step, we need to write the appropriate conversion factor based on this equality. Based on each equality, we can always write two conversion factors. In this case, 1 inch over 2.54 centimeter or 2.54 centimeter over 1 inch. Because of the equality, we know that both of these two conversion factors equal to pure number 1. And this is very important because if you recall, the next step is to multiply our original quantity by this conversion factor. If the conversion factor is not pure number 1, then we will change our given quantity, which is not acceptable. Now the question is, we have two conversion factors, which one should we use? Now for the fourth step, we need to multiply our given quantity 6 inch by one of these two conversion factors. Let's say we try this one first. 6 inch multiplied by 1 inch over 2.54 centimeter is approximately 2.36 with a strange unit of inch squared over centimeter. Although mathematically this is correct, it is obviously not helpful at all because it does not serve the purpose of unit conversion. Therefore, we should not choose this one, but this one instead. Through practice, this choice should become very obvious to you because now inch, the old unit that we no longer want, can be easily cancelled out in the equation. And we are left with 15.24 in the unit of centimeter, the desired unit. Or you can set up the equation in this format. Again, inch can be cancelled out, and again we achieve the same answer. Once again, 6 inches 
and 15.24 centimeters are exactly the same quantity expressed in two different units. Let's look at this example. We need to convert 24.5 square feet to its equivalence in squared meter. And this looks like a quantity of an area. So again, we're going to follow the four step procedure. First step, determine the old unit, which is square foot, and the new unit, which is a squared meter. And the second step, we need to write the equality between the two units. Now, it is not likely you will find the direct relation between squared foot and squared meter. More commonly, the equality is given as one foot equals to exactly 0.3048 meter. And then, based on this equality, we can write the conversion factor of 0.3048 meter over one foot. We don't even bother with the other option because from experience, we know that foot should appear on the denominator because we want to cancel it out. Now, again, this conversion factor has the value of pure number one, which means that if we take this conversion factor to the second power, then we get this, which also equal to pure number one. And this 0.09290 squared meter over one squared foot is the conversion factor we're going to use. And now we can carry out the fourth step, set up our equation this way, cancel out the old unit squared foot, perform the calculation and get 2.28 with the remaining unit of squared meter. And that is the answer to this problem. Let's look at this example. We need to convert 56 mph to its equivalence in meter per second. And this is a quantity of speed. This is an example showing that sometimes multiple equalities and multiple conversion factors are needed during unit conversion. So in this problem, our old unit is mph, which is mile per hour, and our new unit is meter per second. For the second step, to find the relation between these two units. Now, the direct relation between mile and the unit for length in SI unit system is between mile and kilometer. That's one kilometer equals to 0 0.6214 mile. And because kilometer is an SI unit with a prefix of kilo, that means a thousand, therefore one kilometer equals to a thousand meter. And then we need to also find the relation between hour and second, and one hour equals to 60 minutes, and one minute equals to 60 seconds. We're going to use all these four equalities in our unit conversion. Now we are more experienced, we're going to combine step three and step four and write only one equation that includes all the conversion factors. So again, we start with our given quantity written in this format, 56 mile over one hour. And first, we're going to use this equality to cancel out mile. From this equality, we're going to write the conversion factor this way. Notice that mile shows up on the denominator so that it can be canceled out. And then we're going to use this equality so that we can cancel out kilometer because our desired unit for length here is meter. So we write the conversion factor this way so that kilometer can be canceled out. And now let's work on the dimension for time. We want to convert from hour to minute first. From this equality, we're going to write the conversion factor this way. As you can see, hour shows up on the numerator. This way, hour can be canceled out from this equation. And lastly, we want to cancel out minute using this equality. We write the conversion factor this way so that minute can be canceled out. As you can see, now the only units left are meter for length and second for time. Therefore, we're going to group the numbers all together and attach the remaining unit to it. So this gives us 25 
in the unit of meter per second. And that is the answer to this problem. The conversion for temperature is a bit different because in the previous examples, we were only dealing with absolute units. But the units that we commonly use for temperature, both degree Celsius and degree Fahrenheit, are relative units. To help you understand this, if you think of zero meter or zero kilogram, that is no length or no mass. But zero degree Celsius or even zero degree Fahrenheit are quite common temperatures and we often experience sub-zero temperatures as well. Their respective absolute units are Kelvin and degree ranking. Kelvin and degree Celsius use the same scale, the Celsius scale. They simply start at different points on the scale. And degree Fahrenheit and ranking use the same Fahrenheit scale. Let's look at the Celsius scale first. For Celsius scale, zero degree Celsius is defined at the freezing point of water at one atmosphere. And 100 degree Celsius is defined at the boiling point of water also at one atmosphere. Room temperature, as you may know, is about 21 degrees Celsius. Using the Celsius scale, the SI unit for absolute temperature is Kelvin, and zero Kelvin is known as the absolute zero. This is, theoretically, the lowest possible temperature where all molecules stop their motion, and it equals to negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. Because the absolute temperature and relative temperature use the same scale, when converting between them, there is no multiplication factor involved, unlike the examples we worked on previously. We only need to do addition or subtraction. The temperature given in Kelvin equals to the temperature given in degrees Celsius plus 273.15. For example, for temperature 25 degrees Celsius, if we want to convert it into Kelvin, we only need to take 25 plus 273.15, which equals to 298.15 Kelvin. Or for temperature of, say, 328 Kelvin, if we want to convert it into degrees Celsius, we take this number minus 273.15 and get 54.85 degrees Celsius. For degree Fahrenheit and degree ranking, as I mentioned, they use the same Fahrenheit scale for which the freezing point of water is 32 degree Fahrenheit and the boiling point of water is 212 degree Fahrenheit. As you may notice, the difference here is 180 degree Fahrenheit, which equals to, if you recall from the previous slide, 100 degree Celsius. For the Fahrenheit scale, the absolute zero, once again, the theoretically lowest temperature is also zero degree ranking, which equals to negative 459.67 degree Fahrenheit. And if you want to convert between degree Fahrenheit and degree ranking, again, there is no multiplication factor involved. You only need to do addition or subtraction. For example, if you start with 101 degree Fahrenheit and you want to convert this into ranking, you only need to add 459.67 to it. Similarly, if you start with 743 degree ranking and you want to convert this into degree Fahrenheit, you only need to do subtraction. If you want to convert between the Celsius scale and Fahrenheit scale, for the absolute units Kelvin and degree ranking, it is very straightforward. Just like 1 inch equals to exactly 2.54 centimeter, 1 Kelvin equals to exactly 1.8 degree ranking. Therefore, if you want to convert 200 Kelvin to degree ranking, you set it up this way, multiply it by the conversion factor written from the equality, cancel out Kelvin, do the calculation, and that is 360 in the unit of degree ranking. However, for the two relative units, degree Celsius and degree Fahrenheit, the conversion procedure can be a little bit tricky because you must use equations that not only involve a multiplication factor, but also account for the different starting points in temperature. 
we use this equation to convert temperature in degrees Celsius to degree Fahrenheit. If you have 25 degrees Celsius, you multiply it by 1.8 and then plus 32 and get 77 degree Fahrenheit. And for the reversed procedure, we use this equation to convert the temperature in degree Fahrenheit to degree Celsius. For example, if you have 50 degree Fahrenheit, you take 50 minus 32 and then divide it by 1.8 and get 10 degrees Celsius. Fortunately, since this type of conversion is so commonly used, you can easily find tools either online or using your cell phone to help you with it.